right in the middle of the Coral Triangle, which is basically an area of the world of extremely high marine biodiversity. So we've got more fish and corals than any other areas of the world. So it's really important that we come here now and try and actively protect these areas. The work that we do here is very, very varied. Uh, it ranges from anything, we've got our turtle volunteers who do like the turtle walks and the, and the patrols with the turtle surveys, so collecting the eggs uh, and taking them down to the hatchery, uh, right through to the divers who are doing a lot of work with coral, uh, coral transportation and planting out onto the reef flat here. A lot of the areas around here, a lot of the surrounding reefs, still have very nice coral cover. So we can go to those places and we can find these coral fragments and even loose bits of coral that have come from storm damage, diver or anchor damage. And we can get those pieces and we can bring them back here to Pompo and plant them directly onto the reef. We're developing a nursery at the moment. We take these small fragments that we collect and make them into smaller pieces and then put them in a nice environment that they're getting lots of nutrients and, and uh, nice clear water where they can grow to turn the small pieces of fragments into larger corals and then we can bring them back out onto the reef for planting. In terms of our artificial reefs, we've basically got two different types. And the first one's a patch reef where you make a discrete reef structure and then you can plant coral on it, fish are attracted to it, and the idea is that it will expand out laterally and, and vertically as well as the coral grows and, and it will form onto the onto the natural reef that is actually there already. So it's sort of like you're seeding the reef for, for the future growth of the reef. Because at the moment it's all just a rubble slope essentially. We also work on what's called a ribbon reef, which is a, a linear structure along the top of the reef crest. When the rubble on the reef top starts to roll down the slope, the ribbon reef catches it and it stops the rubble movement on the lower side of, of the reef. You can really see already, um, even after just a year or so, and you can see really good development of the corals on the downward slope. Reef conservation like this and restoration is very, very new science. So it's very hard to say what's going to work and what's not going to work. So we're just basically just trying things out, seeing what happens and we're getting some good results. Each day we do two surveys, a high tide survey and a low tide survey where we swim from a section of the beach, normally jetty to jetty between the two resorts, and we have to count how many turtles we can find. So we have to put the size down, what sex they are, and whether they're a hawksbill or a green turtle. And when we find a turtle that's nesting, uh, what we do is we collect the eggs from the nest, um, and we take them down to the hatchery, um, incubate them for about two months, um, and then they're released back into the ocean. If we didn't do this, um, they would all get taken by poachers, essentially. Once they are born, uh, we check them out, and make sure that they're all uh, strong and moving well and energetic before we release. Uh, another thing that we do here is we release normally only around sunset or sunrise. Not only the turtles are following the light and setting their internal compass as they walk down the beach, but it's a lot better chance for a higher ratio to make it through to the open ocean. I think it's really amazing to be able to come and have a relaxing holiday and also give something back and try and make a difference. We've also been really impressed with all the staff here. I've never felt so comfortable trying out a new sport. Although um, my husband and I are very interested in marine conservation, we haven't done any kind of qualifications, but we're still managing to play our part and be here and feel like a really valuable member of the team. So it's very, very accessible to all. The way they've organised it, it just seems to run very smoothly, but with a really laid-back, relaxed feeling. mostly nesting here is an endangered species and the hawks as well is critically endangered. It's possible from time to time we get leatherbacks and olive riddlers as well. So those are all endangered species along with a lot of the fish populations they're all under threat. Blast fishing is a really disgusting practice. Essentially um, you've got
got a small scale fisherman who comes along with his homemade bomb made from fertilizer and kerosene or diesel, um, throws it down onto the reef um, and it just blows everything up. Everything in that area is just destroyed and killed. As a biologist, to look at old videos of this hatchery when there's four or five nests and they now count 38, this is a show of success and it's a feeling that you're doing something bigger than yourself.